Module 4. Messages, Threats, and Power. Distorting Messages. Many factors can distort messages and prevent them from being fully understood. These factors can be internal and external, impacting both the message's sender and receiver. One factor that can distort messages is noise, which can come in many forms, including physical, psychological, and semantic noise. Physical noise can include any external factors that interfere with the transmission or reception of the message, such as loud music or a poor phone connection. Psychological noise can include internal factors that distract the receiver, such as anxiety or stress. Semantic noise can include differences in language or jargon that can create confusion or misunderstandings. Another factor that can distort messages is bias, which can include both cognitive biases and emotional biases. Cognitive biases can lead to distorted thinking and impact how messages are interpreted. Emotional biases can cause individuals to react to a message in a way that is influenced by their emotional state rather than the content of the message. Context is another factor that can impact the understanding of a message, and the same message can have different meanings depending on the context in which it is delivered. Cultural context can also impact understanding a message, as cultural norms and expectations can impact how messages are interpreted. Threats Threats are a type of communication that can be used to exert power and influence over others, and they can have both positive and negative consequences depending on how they are delivered. According to research, five linguistic dimensions can influence the impact of a threat. The first dimension is severity. The severity of a threat refers to the degree to which it conveys the potential consequences of non-compliance. More severe threats are likely more effective in achieving compliance but may also have negative consequences, such as damaging relationships. The second dimension is credibility. The credibility of a threat refers to the degree to which it is perceived as believable by the receiver. Threats that are not credible are unlikely to be effective, while credible threats are more likely to be taken seriously. The third dimension is immediacy. The immediacy of a threat refers to the degree to which it conveys a sense of urgency or immediacy in the consequences of non-compliance. Immediate threats are more likely to be effective than vague or distant threats. The fourth dimension is specificity. The specificity of a threat refers to the degree to which it is clear and specific about the consequences of non-compliance. Specific threats are more likely to be effective than vague threats, as they provide a clear understanding of what is at stake. The fifth dimension is legitimacy. The legitimacy of a threat refers to the degree to which it is perceived as fair and just. Threats perceived as illegitimate may be met with resistance or defiance, while threats perceived as legitimate are more likely to be accepted. The types of power. Power is defined as the ability to influence others or control outcomes, and there are several sources of power that individuals can draw upon to achieve these goals. The five primary sources of power are legitimate power. This type is based on an individual's formal position within an organization or social system. For example, a CEO has legitimate power over their employees, as they hold a formal position of authority. Reward power. This type of power is based on an individual's ability to provide rewards or incentives to others. For example, a manager may have reward power over their employees by offering bonuses or promotions. Coercive power. This type of power is based on an individual's ability to punish or withhold rewards from others. For example, teachers may have coercive power over their students by giving out detentions or poor grades. Expert power. This type is based on an individual's knowledge, skills, or expertise in a particular area. For example, doctors have expert power over their patients due to their knowledge of medicine. Referent power. This type of power is based on an individual's characteristics and qualities, such as charisma, likability, and trustworthiness. For example, Celebrities may have referent power over their fans due to their likable personality and popularity. Each power source has advantages and limitations, and the most influential leaders can use a combination of different power sources depending on the situation. By understanding power sources, 
individuals can develop their leadership skills and use their power to influence others positively and achieve their goals. Personal power. Personal power refers to the ability of an individual to influence and control their own life and the lives of others. It is the ability to make things happen and achieve goals, regardless of the circumstances or obstacles that may arise. Personal power is not necessarily related to external factors such as wealth or status but to internal factors such as self-confidence, self-awareness, and resilience. Individuals who possess personal power can often overcome challenges and achieve success in their personal and professional lives. Self-reflection, goal-setting, and strong relationships can cultivate and strengthen personal power. By developing personal power, Individuals can take control of their lives and work towards their goals with confidence and determination. Behavior and Motivation People are motivated to behave consistently with their values because they represent their core beliefs and principles, and acting under them gives them a sense of purpose, identity, and fulfillment. Values can be derived from various sources, such as religion, social norms, or personal ethical standards and can be deeply ingrained in a person's psyche. When people's values align with their behavior, they experience a sense of inner harmony and satisfaction. This is why individuals motivated to behave consistently with their values tend to be more committed, productive, and satisfied in their personal and professional lives. Religion can be a powerful motivator for ethical behavior, as many religious doctrines promote honesty, compassion, and respect for others. Social norms and ethical standards can also influence behavior, as people are often motivated to conform to their communities or society's expectations. Ultimately, people are motivated to behave consistently with their values because it helps them to achieve a sense of purpose, meaning, and personal fulfillment. By acting per their values, individuals can develop a strong sense of identity, build strong relationships, and contribute to the betterment of society. Communication model. The correct order for the communication model is that the sender encodes the message, the message is transmitted, the receiver decodes the message, and the receiver provides feedback to the sender. Email communication. Email negotiations can be susceptible to four biases that may threaten the negotiation process. First, there is ambiguity bias, where the need for nonverbal cues in written communication can lead to misunderstandings and misinterpretations of tone and intent. Second is the disinhibition bias, where the anonymity of email communication can lead to more aggressive or impulsive behavior that may not occur in face-to-face -face communication. Third, the cognitive overload bias, where the volume and speed of email communication can overwhelm the receiver and hinder their ability to process and respond to the message effectively. Fourth, the confirmation bias, where pre-existing beliefs or stereotypes can influence the receiver's interpretation of the message and lead to confirmation of their own biases. Organization sources of power. In negotiations, organizational sources of power can be a crucial factor in determining the outcome of the negotiation. Negotiators who possess the power within their organization can use their position or status to influence the negotiation. For example, negotiators with legitimate power may be able to make decisions on behalf of their organization. In contrast, those with expert power can provide valuable information or insights that can impact the negotiation. However, it is essential to note that relying solely on organizational sources of power may only be effective in some situations. Negotiators should also consider other factors, such as the other party's sources of power and the overall goals and objectives, to achieve the most favorable outcome.